Pulovinaka, Namaste, good evening. This is Fiji Village Straight Talk. I'm VJ Narayan, your host for tonight. Uh, an exciting night again today. Uh, we have uh, very interesting guests uh, and I will inform you about them. Uh, as far as the 2022 general elections are concerned, there are 693,915 registered voters. Out of this, 77,907 people are registered for pre-poll. Voting that ends tomorrow. Pre-poll voting ends tomorrow. And as I've been saying, you are allocated on certain days, certain times for pre-poll voting, mainly in the interior and the maritime islands. Now, pre-poll voters, if you're listed for pre-poll voting, you have to vote during those times. If you miss out, you cannot vote next Wednesday when some people are saying, when you catch the feeling to vote. It will be too late at that time. So please vote on your allocated days. The other issue is for postal vote applications. 9,916 applications were approved. And for those people, they have time until before 6 p.m. on December 14th, next Wednesday, to return their batches after they've voted. That means 606,092 people are listed to vote next Wednesday, December 14th. Tonight, our focus is on the view of our women candidates. What are the main issues that concern them? How are they coping during this campaign period? Challenges that they face in politics and successes and challenges in women leadership in Fiji. We have Paina Rokotambua of the Fiji Labour Party, Lenora Gergere Tambua from the National Federation Party, Linda Tambuya from the People's Alliance, Ana Roko Mokoti from Sodelpa and Litiana Mbolivo from Unity Fiji. They confirmed their participation in the last few weeks and are ready for tonight. No confirmation came from Fiji First General Secretary Aya Said Kayum on the participation of a Fiji, face, a Fiji First female candidate. We have a chair here showing that they were invited to this table to have discussions and we have been sending invites since early last month. Straight into the questions, ladies, thank you very much for accepting our invitation to uh, speak to the voters directly, the people watching out there. Starting with Taina, in alphabetical order, from Fiji Labour Party, what are some of your main challenges in campaigning and how are you coping in the political arena? Thank you, uh, Vijay, for your question. Um, one of the most... Um, what can I say? Um, challenging um, aspects of uh, campaigning as a woman is we get to hear comments like uh, they belong in the kitchen. Uh, why are they out here? This is for men, especially when we reach out to the villages. Um, is there no men here to fight for the people? Um, so I simply tell them that uh, what men can do, he can do, yes. So that's the main challenge. That's the main challenge. Lenora from NFP. Man, sorry, Vijay, I just can't believe that you're still he hearing that kind of yes. comments. <laughs> okay, well, that's really interesting. Well, challenges for me during campaigning, I think it's because the whole of Fiji is one constituency and because we're allowed to campaign basically wherever we can. Um, for us in the opposition, all our funding is either from donors or from our own pockets. So when you have the whole of Fiji and Rotuma to try and garner votes from, the biggest challenge for me has been, oh crap, what do I do? How do I afford going to Kandavu, going to Naitasiri, going to Lombasa, going to the Western Division. That really has been, I think, the biggest challenge for me is figuring out where I go using how much money I do have. Linda from People's Alliance. Bulevina Kaviji, first of all, I want to say I'm quite disappointed. I think we all are that Fiji First is not here. We were hoping, uh, you know, that one of them would make it because they were here in 2018 and 2014 but maybe they're running late, so hopefully they'll join us. But uh, you know, in terms of a challenge for me, I think uh, my biggest challenge is um, as a mother and uh, um, 
juggling the time between family and going out campaigning. Uh, you know, there's only so much time in the day, and you know, I have six children, and I, I have to, you know, manage all of them. There are, uh, you know, two overseas, and they all want my time, as well as um, I have a, a five-year-old. So it's very hard for him, you know, to, to have to see me go. And I think that's something that we women face. We all face that. And uh, it's, uh, it's not easy, but it's worth it. Anna from Sudelba. Thank you, Vijay. First of all, thank you for having uh, us, having me. I feel very privileged to be part of this uh, discussion. We have two uh, senior politicians, uh, Lenora and uh, Linda. I'm very uh, proud. Uh, being here. Uh, certainly, um, so Delpa has adopted a different approach in terms of campaigning strategies. One is uh, to uh, assign candidates, constituencies. So I've been given BOA and I'm very proud because I uh, have links there. Nasolo Nandi, Oeriki, Nambuwalu, Namulumulo. So uh, as much as I'm very proud, I'm also, I, I was aware right from the beginning that it's challenging because I have to leave my home front. Yeah. And like Linda, uh, you know, being a mother, uh, as much as I warn them in advance, listen, I'm going into political uh, activity mode here. I need some space. I need some... Uh, but uh, you can never really run away from motherly duties. Uh, having said that, uh, just trying to uh, um, gather financial support to reach the unreachable so to speak. I've been to Yandua, I've been to uh, uh, Yanganga, I've been to Ngaloa. These are the islands uh, that uh, is included in the Boa province. I've been up to Wainunu, I've been to Nasarwanga, I've been to a number of villages. So for me is uh, reaching these unreachable places. I call them unreachable because uh, even though you have communities settled there, villages, but uh, the infrastructure is not as good as it is in Suva. Uh, these people are challenged uh, with uh, um, accessing good roads, electricity, water. So I'll, I'll tell you a bit of my experience. I got off the boat uh, at 10.30 at night. I make my way up to my accommodation. So there's dinner spread out. Uh, we say grace as soon as I say amen. I open my eyes and the lights go out. This is number one when I'm saying, is this a power blackout? They said, no, the lights go out at 11. All of a sudden I felt like I was in boarding school. But anyway, this is just, so when I do go out, I have to make sure that, you know, I don't stay out too late because of uh, darkness. <laughs> yes, but uh, certainly, but I'm enjoying, I, I, I've certainly enjoyed it so far. Lidiana from Unity Fiji. Um, thank you, Vijay. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation to be here. I'm really excited to be part of this group, and um, it will be my first time to um, be part of a discussion like this. Uh, for me, uh, as a single parent, um, I've had um, a bit of a challenge having to um, uh, juggle my time uh, with my 10-year-old daughter at home. Um, she's always missing me because I'm always leaving early and I'm uh, coming home uh, really late at night. I've tried to have uh, have uh, conversations with her, um, telling her the the reason why I'm always away and the reason why I'm you know doing all of this. Um, she tries to understand that as well, but uh, you know for a child at 10 years old, they really need their mother to be around. Um, on the other hand, uh, as we have seen, there has been new laws um, put in place. I think one of the biggest challenges as well is uh, trying to make sure that whatever we do, we don't infringe these laws and. Um, you know, uh, because they've just come in at a time, uh, you know, leading up to campaigns and elections, it's been really, um, you know, um, it's been quite challenging and trying to get everybody in the team to make sure that nobody infringes, um, um, you know, any of the laws as well, working as a team. That for me has been quite a challenge. Um, I think, and the last bit is the financial bit. It's quite an expensive exercise to participate um, in elections. Um, I guess uh, some people would say, you know, that's to be expected. But uh, we've just come out of uh, the pandemic and um, not everybody has fully recovered. Um, but everybody has that ambition to participate. 
they want to stand up for elections and do something for their country. Um, you know, uh, for some people it, that can happen, for some it can't. But for, th for those that have uh, boldly stepped up and actually done it, um, you know, it can be quite a challenge. But I guess uh, we've come this far, we might as well finish it. It's just a few more days to go, so why not? I'll do the next question, and based on alphabetical order, uh, Lenora from uh, NFP, uh, we'll start this off with the answer. Our electoral laws were amended last year, which included women having to change their birth certificate if they want to use their married name on their voter ID card, passport, or any other official ID. Married women have had to put an asterisk and put their husband's name on their birth certificate when they have to go to the births, deaths and marriages and get that process undertaken. What is your stand on this and why? You know, I think this, is, has, this has been a deliberate attempt by the government of the day to make voting as difficult as possible, to disenfranchise about half the population of Fiji. How is that fair? How is that normal in what is called a democracy? It is plain evil. That, that is my belief. To disenfranchise thousands upon thousands of women who may or may not have the means to come to town to change the things that they need to change in order to practice their democratic right. I know there is a challenge before the courts we won't go to the court issue, mm. but I'm asking you what would mm. you do? And that's the second part of the question. What's your stand on it and why? This has to be repealed. Basically has to be repealed. This is unfair on about half the population of a country that wants to go to the polls and disenfranchising women, married women, is absolutely undemocratic. Linda Tamuya from People's Alliance. Uh, Vijay, when this law was being debated and passed in Parliament, uh, we sought the explanation from the supervisor of elections about why, uh, you know, this law needed to be changed for women to change their voter ID card names. Um, and then uh, the reply was that there was um, apparently a fraud in 2018 where people used uh, both their names. So we asked, uh, tell us the statistics, you know, um, how many? And he said 76. So 76 people who did that compared to 100,000 married women in 2018 who voted in their married names. It just doesn't justify the change in that law. And it's not just limited to changing their name on the voter ID card. It's also when their ID cards expire, they will need to change it into their maiden name. And I'm talking about driver's license, passports, uh, you know, bank documents, wherever they hold their names in joint accounts with their husbands or by themselves, uh, even a will, they have to change it. And so, you know, it, it just shows the, the gravity of this law and how much it affects married women. And, you know, I, I just share an experience. I, I was in uh, Nebakaroni New in San Nima in Kandavu and was talking about the change in this law. And there were women there that looked at me and just said, you know, I've made a spiritual commitment before God to take on my husband's name. And for this law to come, I, it's just better that I do not vote. And I agree with Lenora, and I believe that is really the purpose of this law, is to disenfranchise these women so that they do not vote. And, you know, and with pre-polling, and we're tracking the, the results of pre-polling this week, and the attendance, mm -hmm. in fact, there's quite a big portion of women that are not voting. I don't know if it's for this very reason, we'll have to find out, but there certainly is. So, you know, this is affecting uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the ability for our women to vote. And this law needs to be removed, just like Lenora said. We need to be able to allow women, it happens in every other place in the world, that a woman can use her married name or her maiden name. Without changing the birth certificate. Correct. Anna Rokomokoti from Sodelpa. Uh, yes, thank you. I think that's a very good question. And uh, I think um, the ladies from the two uh, political parties have basically touched on uh, uh, a genuine concern. Uh, for me, as uh, uh, putting on the legal lenses, it's uh, certainly a break from common law. Uh, the Fijian Foundation legal system, the legal system, is founded on British common law system. So when you break with common law tradition, where you prohibit 
a woman to use a, her common uh, her husband's name, which she is permitted under common law, uh, it begs the question as to where are we going. So I see the law morphing. I'm unsure as to what exactly uh, it's going to eventuate in. But of course, it can be argued this is just one aspect of the law. But also, I think uh, in addition to that, you have our mothers, our grandmothers have been allowed to use their husband's uh, na uh, uh, name without the need of uh, changing their birth certificate. And I think that in itself is heartbreaking to, to hear. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, I've always used my maiden name and I have, haven't had to go through the ordeal. Uh, but, uh, you know, some are very traditional uh, uh, women and who hold strong and true to traditional practices. So when you sort of force them to make a change, it's all, you, you're making them give up their identity and tradition. So uh, certainly I would like to have uh, that piece of legislation revisited. Uh, sure. Litia Nambulibu, Unity Fiji. Thank you very much. Um, in my opinion, uh, I raised the question as to the timing that the changes were being made uh, almost uh, in time, uh, you know, for the uh, elections. And um, one of the things that I understand is laws are always made for the people. Um, one of the things that I think um, that we uh, probably disagree on is the fact that, you know, consultation was not done on the issue. Uh, mm -hmm. They just made it and, uh, you know, it was passed and it became, uh, it was implemented as law. So it would have been great um, if they had uh, consulted people on that. And I think, uh, um, you know, if I were to uh, uh, be in Parliament, that's one of the things that we would like to review and uh, take it back to the people, have consultations uh, done, you know, have their voice being heard and uh, take it from there. That would be our stand on the issue. Taina Rokotambua, Fiji Labour Party. My personal view is um, this law need to be repealed, just like the two ladies are saying. Uh, it takes away our right to our identity. We were born with our name on the birth certificate. Um, and this government, like uh, the Unity Fiji uh, said, never ever had a consultation with the people, more so the women, whose voice needs to be heard. We have a right to be heard too. I need to say, no, I don't want my husband's name there. I need to, on my birth certificate especially, because my birth certificate um, was done when I was born. So it's our right, it's our identity that's been taken away, and uh, everything is just bulldozed to us. Whether you like it or not, they just put their hands up and uh, there goes so. So here we are running around, trying to fit in now. Either we take our husband's name on board or we take ours. You're watching Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm Vijay Narayan and tonight, as we have stated earlier, we have the Fiji Labour Party, NFP, People's Alliance, Sudelpa and Unity Fiji in attendance. For the women's debate, we extended an invitation to Fiji First General Secretary Aya said Kayum to send a female candidate. There was no response. Moving on to the next question, this is for People's Alliance. The supervisor of elections has said that voter turnout could be as low as 50% based on the trends that he is seeing in postal vote applications and as far as other trends are concerned. What are you doing to increase voter turnout for pre-polling and on election day and what do you think should be done? Thank you, Vijay. Well, uh, without going into much detail about the case that's before the court. We cannot go to any court case. Absolutely case. not. But, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the need or the attempt to get young people to vote because of the, the low voter turnout in the last elections was really about 178,000 was mostly made up of um, Itauke youth. And uh, as uh, the president of Nasinu in the People's Alliance, that's pretty much where a lot of the young people, the, the Itoke youth, reside and uh, have also not turned up to, to elections in the last uh, election. So, you know, the, the effort to, um, you know, to try to get young people to vote, unfortunately, um, has been not really 
uh, you know, seen favorably by the elections office. We've tried to help. But look, I, I think uh, at the end of the day, we need to keep on giving our messages on our social media platforms where young people are, whether it's TikTok, uh, you know, Instagram and Facebook, as well as Twitter. We need to reach them. And these are the platforms that they are on. And we must continue to, you know, to drive that message that they've got to turn up to voting. I hope it's a beautiful day. There's going to be free transport provided now. So that is really good. Um, we've been getting feedback from the pre-poll attendance of our young people. They've been attending to, uh, you know, to vote as well as uh, become polling agents for parties. So there's been greater engagement of young people this time around. I think they've been voicing their opinions a lot more and have been gathering a lot more, so, which, is, which is really encouraging. And I, I hope that they do uh, show that uh, in the, uh, on Election Day on the 14th of December. Anna Ruko Mokoti of Shadelpa. Yes, um, uh, for me, I have been using my social media platform and uh, whenever I have visited uh, um, uh, potential voters, I've always uh, encouraged them uh, as much as I can. Um, and uh, I, I suppose because we are not really aware of the reasons as to why they did not vote in the first time, uh, you try and canvas a, a, any possible reason why they should, you know, um, be complacent about voting. So uh, with my strategy has been wherever I can, whenever I can, whoever I speak to, social media uh, platforms and uh, physically visiting voters, potential voters, I, I do encourage them. And of course, the uh, voters, we need to be reminded of the consequences mm -hmm of not voting, and that can be very uh, uh, detrimental. Lithiana Bulivu of Unity Fiji. Um, thank you. I have actually had the opportunity to visit um, quite a lot of the villages in rural areas. And um, I've seen that uh, when we do go into the Valinisongo uh, or the village hall, um, there's a turnout. The turnout would always be uh, compromise, uh, comprised of um, elderly men, uh, the women, but the youth are, uh, are always missing uh, in these get-togethers. Uh, so I usually, when I get a chance to talk, I usually tell them, uh, you know, it's very important that our young people uh, get to come in on the 14th of December and participate because the majority of the uh, registered voters are actually made up of, uh, of our youth. Mm -hmm. And I said to them, um, the only way we can change this is within the family unit. When you're having dinner in the afternoon, sit down as a family and really talk to your children on how important it is. Um, the other thing that I've always spoken about is the thinking, the mentality that, uh, you know, politics is for, for older people. It's got nothing to do with young people. But we have to tell them that everything that's decided in parliament affects everybody in their everyday lives. So uh, at a young age, you know, no matter how young they are, we, we, we should start instilling the thought in them on how important it is. Uh, for them to do their, their duty, their responsibility, to turn up on 14th of December and vote. Thank you, Rocco Tambu, Fiji Labour Party. Um, yes, I've been reaching out to the youth through my social media platforms. And also when I'm out campaigning, um, I stress the importance of the youth and everybody else for that matter, that your vote must count. If you want to change, it must begin with you. So my message to the youth, um, whenever I go out for campaign or on a one-to-one -one basis or when I, I meet people around, um, uh, especially to my children and their friends, that it is very important that you have a voice in the change of the government. Mm. Okay. Lenora from NFP. Yeah, thank you, Vijay. I mean, first of all, I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's a comment that shouldn't have been made in the first place, um, already preempting you know, already talking about low, to, low, low water turnout days before the elections. But then let me go to the, um, I think Linda and I have been tagged on a, on a, on a, on a post recently from um, people that have gone overseas to earn a living for, them, for their family who are on this um, neck and palm worker schemes, complaining about how difficult it has been for them to vote. And this is not only for those who have recently gone overseas, it's for people who have been living overseas for many, many years. Mm. Um, you know, 
I, I, I recall that I think the, um, the National Federation Party had questioned Salim on whether those who were going away to work in the worker scheme had registered. And he had said, yes, everyone had been registered. That's fine. The ability to vote is a totally different matter. And it's been made very difficult when you're, for example, getting up before the crack of dawn to go from country New South Wales to go to a farm where you're working and you're expected to apply for postal ballot to make sure that you and your group, and I, I want to say thank you very much to members of the Fijian diaspora overseas who have been supporting those who have come to your country to come and to, 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 to vote. Thank you very much for helping them. But, you know, um, there are also students, year 12, year 13 students, who have exams on Wednesday the 14th of December. A father asked me a couple of days ago during one of my campaign meetings, he said, oh, Luvengu, um, she's going to be sitting in a, a paper on Wednesday the, the 14th, so what choices do we have? So I just asked, okay, what time is the paper? It's in the afternoon. I said, please, get your daughter in a uniform, have a good breakfast, go and stand in line, vote, and then go and do your exam. Mm -hmm. So these are the very real difficulties. And one thing I wanted to just stress again is to tell the people of Fiji, not voting is voting. Mm -hmm. If you don't vote, you actually are voting. Mm -hmm. If you don't take action, you actually are taking some kind of action. So please, make it a priority to stand up and go and cast that ballot. And the supervisor of elections is also uh, called on uh, the employers of this country because of uh, the postal vote uh, applications that have been received, uh, 23,000 expected, 9,916 applied. Based on that, uh, he has called for business houses to ensure that people come out to vote, that on that day, business houses, if they can open from about 1 o'clock in the afternoon so that they get uh, their employees' time to go out there and vote. And you have the platform right here as well to talk directly to the people. Uh, we have a big audience to ask people and we continue to stress to people to come out and vote. As we said, some if you if you have to vote for pre-poll, you have to vote at your pre-poll venue on the allocated day at the allocated time. You cannot turn up at a polling station on December 14th next Wednesday and demand to vote. You will not be allowed to vote. We'll be back after this break. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there's been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he's not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? Fiji First Buy. cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when you came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart? It's him. No, you're uh, a joke. No, you're a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. You don't bring that up. You don't. No, no, I gotta bring it up. You were commander. But yes, Every but military officer and servicemen at the time was under your command. If you've forgotten, you trade them. Bulovinaka, this is Fiji Village Trade Talk. I am VJ Narayan. VG Village Trade Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the VG Village Facebook page. Download the all new VG Village app. Get the latest news direct to your mobile. Get the latest sports updates from our scoreboards online. Navigate easily through our categories. Watch videos from Straight Talk interviews, local music videos, sports and many more. You can now easily listen to your favorite radio stations from your phone. Download the all-new Fiji Village app right now. Welcome back. This is Fiji Village Trade Talk. I'm VJ Narayan. Tonight, we're talking to women candidates about a number of national issues with days away from elections. Of course, uh, there will be a campaign blackout period 
that starts from December 12th, which is uh, Monday morning, and no campaign talk, no political talk from December 12th to 6 p.m. December 14th, after everyone has voted, then the political talk can start again. So the next question for us uh, goes to you, Anna Rokomokoti of Sodelpa. What is your view on women participation in the Fijian parliament? It has been said that it should not be based on a percentage of reserved seats for women and should always be based on merit. What are your thoughts? Uh, thank you for that uh, question, Vijay. Um, first of all, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, equal opportunity must be given to all mm -hmm. and everyone must be given the opportunity to access uh, um, parliamentary seats, if you like. Um, open merit uh, is something that uh, has been used in the recent past. Uh, the idea is to basically invite everyone and select the best. Um, the, the question really is, what do we want to achieve? Uh, and also you need to balance that against the rights and freedoms of individual citizens in this country. Um, as much as uh, if, if we are able to put a, a, a a uh, maximum or minimum percentage of uh, women to be represented in Parliament, you still got to balance that against the rights and freedoms of women, uh, basically giving them the freedom to choose whether they want to or not. So it's not an easy uh, question uh, to answer. I think that would need uh, proper uh, consultations with uh, uh, the Fijian uh, population that would need, definitely need uh, a, uh, a contribution from the, from the women in Fiji. And of course, different uh, organizations and different NGOs and uh, the United Nations also have their own uh, target. But uh, I've always, uh, I'm someone who, who has always believed that um, uh, our laws and our requirements and our practices must reflect the values the local domestic values. And uh, whatever the answer is to that question, it must reflect the values of our, uh, of our country. So that's probably where I'll position myself at this uh, stage. Like I said, it's not an easy question to answer. Litiana from uh, Unity Fiji. I think if we were to base it on merit, then uh, it would infringe on the rights of the very principles of democracy. Um, but then again, uh, I agree with uh, Anna uh, on the fact that uh, it really is not an easy uh, question to, uh, to answer. Uh, it's something that needs, uh, I would say it's something that needs uh, wide consultation again. Because the whole idea of this journey uh, about having elections and everything is really um, having, uh, you know, whatever we put in place, it's got to be for the people. Um, so uh, it's important that the people's uh, voice and opinion on these issues are heard and they, uh, again, uh, uh, whatever decision we do, uh, that they uh, reflect on that accordingly as well. Taina from uh, Labour Party. Uh, yes, I would have to agree with the two ladies. Um, it, it needs a broader consultation with the people. Um, it's their choice. They want you to get up there with your merit base or just um, the... Uh, based on reserve based, seats. Exactly. So you don't have a stand on it. Go um, back to the people. Go back to the people because at the end of the day, you are going into parliament for the people. So let them decide. Lenora from mm -hmm. NFP. Oh, thanks, Vijay. Um, when it comes to temporary special measures, I think that's what we're talking about, temporary special measures, having an allocated reserve list of seats for especially for women i agree with temporary special measures i think that is very important in normalizing women in leadership positions in fiji and that has been done around the world with success people need to remember that temporary special measures are just that temporary it is to allow the normalization of having women as leaders in parliament um, yes when you have temporary special measures have a merit-based system for the women who will come in and take those seats. 
Women have always been marginalized in leadership positions, in the boardrooms, in industry, in parliament, and all these ladies will, will agree with me. In politics, it is even harder because women are seen as the primary caregivers in, par in, in, in our families. Mm -hmm. And again, I just want to repeat, temporary special measures should be just that, temporary. So if you have a bunch of seats reserved for women, have the criteria for those women who will take that up that position to a point where TSMs or temporary special measures have been normalized within the society. And Taina's answer to your question, Vijay, about feedback during her own campaign meetings is quite telling. You know, when people are asking, you know, women should be in the kitchen, come on. It is 2022. And I think having women in politics, in positions of leadership in politics, through temporary special measures, is something we should all agree to. In the Tambuya from People's Alliance. Temporary special measures um, have never been tried in Fiji before. I certainly hear Lenora about, you know, the, maybe it's time to try it. And I agree with the ladies about the need to perhaps consult on that issue. I think we need to consult the people whether we are ready for it. You know, it hasn't worked in all countries, you know, especially in the Pacific. We've had uh, Papua New Guinea and um, Samoa. They've had it and uh, they hadn't filled those seats for quite some time. I think they've just had some success lately. So, uh, you know, it is, it is, it just really just depends on the country and the people and, and what kind of empowerment is being given to women in a country. And I think we are still quite behind in that, you know, as Lenora said, you know, in terms of leadership positions, but also, you know, for women as, as a barrier to entry to politics, as is mentioned, is a financial issue. And so, you know, the times that we live in right now, there's, we're already struggling um, you know, to deal with, uh, you know, with uh, poverty and the cost of living. And this time around, you know, even for women to apply to become a candidate, uh, we've seen a reduction of that. Um, and I believe it's, you know, for this reason, it's really a struggle this time and the sacrifices. So, you know, uh, the reflection in terms of the number of candidates in the, in the parties is not because of a lack of women wanting to participate far from the truth it's it's because uh they just have these barriers to deal with and they you know they haven't applied because of that and so you know the before we used to have the the constituencies and i think that would have helped uh candidates especially women candidates if they were just told they just need to focus in one area and just you know use finances to to focus on on a certain area and have a better chance to get a seat in parliament without the 5% threshold. You know, just you win your seat, you get into parliament. So they just need to campaign in a specific area where the finances will be able to match that. But because the new election laws now have just removed all of that, we are now one constituency. So now you even have a pecking order where those with the most amount of money or a party with the most amount of money or the people with the, with the same and then, uh, you know, are, are ahead in terms of visibility and, and also going around because they have the means. So you can just imagine that women candidates are just left even far behind because it is, you know, something that um, we firstly consider. How do we take care of our families? How do we take care of our expenses? And how do we manage our budget before even putting aside, you know, money for, for, uh, being, for being in politics, which has a very high chance that you may not make it. And that addresses the issue about how our culture and how our, our, our um, people see women in leadership and our sisters here have mentioned about the brutality mm. of social media with women. I mean, we've experienced it, Lenora and I, being in parliament and how there's always something greater to attack us on, you know, what we're wearing, uh, how, you know, we have done our hair or, uh, you know, how we're behaving and how, how long is your skirt or how short it is, you know, are you wearing a sulira? So, you know, there's, there's a lot more for a woman to take when it comes to politics and they see this and unfortunately that becomes another deterrent for, for women to engage in politics and I think it just takes courage like uh, the women that are here in this room and even our, you know, our women from Fiji First, you know, to stand up and to do this. And so I, I encourage other women that if we can do it, you can, you can.
You're watching Fiji Village Trade Talk. I'm VJ Narayan. Uh, questions continue to come in. Uh, but just a clarification, uh, I think, uh, Lenora, that uh, parent uh, is misled on the information regarding exams. So the exam dates have been changed. The year eight ex external exams will begin Friday 9th December and on Tuesday 13th December instead of being held from the 13th to the 15th of December. Year 12 exams started on Thursday 1st December and on Tuesday 13th December Year 13 exams that was initially scheduled to start on Tuesday 29th November now end on Friday 9th December. So uh, all dates have been changed, Thank you. which That's means good. that nobody is sitting for any external exam papers on election day on December 14th. Thanks for that. On to uh, Litiana, this uh, question. Uh, from your perspective and assessment, what is a contentious issue affecting Fijians that needs to be changed immediately and why? Um, thank you very much, uh, Vijay. I uh, think, uh, at, I, I apologize for that. At this point, um, one of the main issues that we need to uh, sort out uh, right away would be the uh, um, high cost of living um, that's um, affecting everybody. Um, <coughs> issues that affect um, uh, people on a very daily basis uh, would be one, um, health, uh, the health services issues. One contentious issue and what will you do about it immediately? Okay, um, to do with the high cost of living, um, when we go into Parliament, one of the things that uh, we would definitely do would be to, uh, if I would refer to the uh, cost of food items right now, which is really um, affecting a lot of Fijians out there, uh, the first thing that we would do is definitely um, shift the burden uh, from the people and uh, have it shared by the uh, business houses and uh, yeah, get government to step in and sub subsidize on that as well uh, to ease the burden on how? Uh, everyday how? people. How? How will you uh, do that? That would be done through uh, policies in place. Uh, for me, I would uh, personally advocate on that and make sure uh, that uh, uh, when the government of the party that I will be part of goes in, uh, it's something that will be implemented right away. You said burden on businesses. What kind of burden? I'm talking about, um, okay, I'm talking about at the moment, uh, with in terms of uh, costs of uh, food items, um, the burden, the financial burden of that right now is being paid by the people themselves completely. Um, so to share that uh, with the business houses uh, would be like... Um, you know, um, lift some of the burdens so that some of the costs are shared by the business community as well, and whatever is left of that of that would be subsidised by government. That's yeah. what I'm referring to. Contentious issue uh, for you, Labour Party, Taina. One contentious issue affecting Fijians that needs to be changed immediately, and why? It's a rising cost of living. Rising cost of living for everybody. Um, Every day something seems to be rising, inflation. So when the inflation rises, the tax increases. Um, what Fiji Labour Party thinks when we get into government is we will uh, increase, we will review the wages, minimum wages, to bring it up, and we will reduce the food prices. Reduce the food prices so it can come up to a balance um, in terms of um, um, when we say we will reduce the um, the food prices. Uh, that's where we will look at tax reform. So you'll reduce the taxes and duties on food items. Uh, we will reduce taxes and duties of uh, food items. If need be, we will remove it altogether, because as it is now. Uh, the 30,000 um, threshold, that's the 30,000 uh, poverty line. Um, the government has income, said... Income, income tax income, threshold. In, income tax threshold. That's for people who own $30,000 or less. Yeah. Uh, they have removed, they said, according to them, it's, you know, people uh, don't pay tax. But then people win, I mean... They don't, pay, they don't pay income tax. They don't pay income tax, but then they, they pay that, which is still tax. So... What will you do? 
So we will remove text. Which text? The the the, the very edit text. Um, and uh, we will do a text reform so that those who earn higher will be given certain percentage to pay more tax. Say, um, the higher you earn, the more you pay. You mean income tax, income personal tax, income tax. Personal income tax. Okay, Lenora from NFP. I think we all agree on the high cost of living and um, the National Federation Party really wants to reduce poverty to perhaps a negligible level. And one of the ways we plan to do that is to work more closely with the NGOs and religious groups who have been on the ground for decades and know the communities in and out. But unfortunately, there's a group of people that this government just refuses to work with. You know, we have people like Sashi Kiran and Friend. We have so many charities, the uh, FCOS and the, 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 the FCOS groups from around the country that are looking for support from members of the community, they walk into people's homes, they know what people are going through. So one of the ways we want to you know, help reduce um, poverty in Fiji to negligible levels is to support and allow NGOs and religious organizations to do what they do best, and that is through the charity work. In the Tabuya, your contentious issue one. I think the most important thing that uh, we want to do in the first 100 days of the People's Alliance is to uh, convene a national economic summit. We really have to look at the, um, you know, the state of our economy and really what the state of our finances are in government. We have a lot of you know, people saying, please do this for us, please do that for us, and we tell them, you know, we, we can't promise you because we really do not know the state of our economy, what the real state of our finances are. These were reflected when we were in parliament. Uh, you know, always asking for annual reports of our state-owned entities and, and other places, but we, we, it's not forthcoming, so we really don't know the current state of our finances, and we need to conduct this as soon as possible, and it's, it's related to, you know, how we need to convene the National Tripartite Forum so that the employers and the employees and the government come together so that we can see how we can move forward working together, something that hasn't been in place for so long. And that is the need for, um, you know, for the tripartite forum to be reestablished, and they are reinstated into, uh, you know, boards like the FNPF and other places where they need to sit, and just really look at these really, really important bread and butter issues like cost of living, employment, minimum wage, etc. Anna from uh, Shadelpa. Uh, one of the most content contentious issue that is. Uh, burdening our young people today is the debt that they owe to government for having pursued a formal education at the university. So Sudapa will relieve them of that onerous burden by removing the debt, forgiving the debt. It's called the uh, debt cancellation or debt forgiveness. Uh, so we are aware that a significant number of graduates start off uh, with a thirty to forty thousand burden over their head, uh, heads, and uh, you know they also in the way the Fijian society is structured, uh, we always uh, give back to our parents and our grandparents. Mm. So there's an additional burden right there. Uh, so Sodelpa sees it fit to help our young people uh, by doing exactly that, relieving them of their, their financial burden and setting them free. Thank you. Uh, next question uh, for uh, Taina Rokotambu from uh, Fiji Labour Party. Uh, we'll stick to cost of living. There's a lot that's been talked about. A lot of messages are coming through to us about putting food on the table. Uh, the Household Income and Expenditure Survey uh, reflected uh, statistics before COVID. Uh, so there's some uh, saying that uh, that has risen further. The adult equivalent uh, per week, uh, based on uh, the baseline poverty at the moment, is forty-one dollars a week. Uh, it's even said that the poverty line needs to be higher than that because forty-one dollars a week is minimal uh, for adult equivalent. Now. Based on that, and we've also known that on the ground people are asking, uh, but their inflated 
freight charges, fuel costs are going up, there's high wages. What are some of the initiatives for those living on or below the poverty line? What is your assessment on how families and mainly women are coping, knowing they're sometimes left to make ends meet as well in uh, households? Thank you, uh, Jay. The first thing Fiji Labour Party would do is stop foreign borrowings altogether. Stop foreign borrowing because economic growth in Fiji is, uh, is living on imported consumption. Okay? Be, uh, filled with, and it's filled with debt driven by inflation. Eh? Uh, this is where the cost of living rises. So what we are thinking what we are going to implement is uh, into a, we'll go into our agriculture. So that people are given land, leases, uh, they'll be guided, they'll be helped, financed, uh, to produce locally and sell, so that uh, the government can uh, help those who are maybe unemployed, um, by by helping them to um, when they go into agro farming, uh, the, the the government uh, will give leases and um, and uh, sorry, the government will uh, give them leases so that they can uh, produce locally, and the government will buy off them and sell it. Uh, rather than importing uh, consumption from abroad. You said uh, you'll, you will not borrow from overseas, you'll borrow, borrow for, uh, locally. Yes. Where will you borrow from? Uh, Decision-based? The, the two... For, uh, for FNPF. FNPF are the two main institutions in Fiji and Reserve Bank of uh, Fiji. So when we borrow from FNPF, it's good for the members. Because FNPF is an institution of the employment uh, employees. Um, the money is kept there. When the government borrows, the government pays back interest. And that interest goes to the members. So it's circulated within the economy. You don't have to, we don't have to pay back in other currency. That Thank causes you. The increase in, yeah. Lenora, question about putting food on the table. A lot of people are concerned about that. What can be done? You know, I've, I'd like to put it back to the people, actually. Um, when we have autonomy over our own families, um, we have autonomy over our spending. Um, I've been in my village in Kandavu uh, Monday, Tuesday, where I got on a boat, went out to an island, and went and dived for kandar, which everyone in Kandavu loves to eat. We're eating off the land. I think in a lot of communities, um, we are using a lot more money than we should be on imported food. Fiji as a country is importing way too much food, way too much food, when we have so much land available. I was in Thailand a couple of months ago and I brought back dried guava, dried pineapple, dried mangoes. It's mango season right now. We have guavas aplenty. Why are we not using our own non-sugar agricultural products to cut down our import bill? And I think that is where one, in first thing, as a mother, as a parent of a, a young woman who is already married, one thing we encourage at home is eat from the garden first. You know, yes, we love our buns, we love our, all that kind of stuff, but that cuts into our, our, our income. And I think we need to take the power back. We as families of Fiji, we as the people of Fiji need to take the power back, look after our health, look after our finances by learning to eat from the food that we produce locally in Fiji. Lina Tabuya from People's Alliance. Um, with uh, due respect, I'll have to disagree with my colleague from Fiji Labour Party. You know, um, it's not necessarily where you get the debt from. So, you know, to, we, we, we should be able to borrow from overseas. We should be able to uh, borrow from FNPF and RBF, but it's really about how it's been managed. 
because debt is good as long as it's sustained. But once it becomes unsustainable, then you've really got to look at the people that are managing the debt. And that's where our Minister for Economy has failed miserably because he's not even an economist and he's trying to manage the economy and for 16 years. So this needs to change. We need to get in the right people in there. In the first 100 days of, you know, of, uh, of us getting into government, we will um, present a mini budget and look at how government has been wasting a lot of money in its spending as well as uh, reviewing um, all the, the price control of, of goods and services which has been mentioned by my uh, colleagues that you know, we need to review the, the prices. You know, I, I, was, I was actually shocked to see how a locally produced commodity like sugar, which is right in you know, Fiji Sugar Corporation, our local goods have been sold at such ridiculous prices. It's $10 now for four kilos. And in the village, it's even more. It's 14 to $16. So why are our local items costing way more than what's imported? And why are our fruit, like watermelon, is now $30, and pineapples are like $5, and you know, lettuce and vegetables cost way more than apples and oranges in the supermarket? So there's something amiss. There's something wrong somewhere. Why are the, you know, the prices of what's important being driven down? whereas the prices of what we have locally is driven up. This just shows the lack of confidence this government has in our people and the ability for our industries to produce goods that can sustain us and that we can afford the price here in Fiji. So we are depending on imported foods. We are paying, even if it's lower price, uh, they, they've been driven by volume. So who is gaining from this? It's the, it's the big businesses who are importing. It's the importers, and they are uh, marking up their prices for items where people don't have a choice, that is not produced locally. But when it comes to local foods, we are paying more here, and they're driving down the price because they're producing volume. They know there are things that we will buy, like if apples and oranges are cheap, we're going to buy that instead of pineapples. So this needs to all be reviewed. We need an entire review of how we are uh, purchasing from overseas and what we are producing locally, as my colleagues have said. And yes, we need to be able to have leadership that can, you know, run our economy and can sustain our debt. Anna Rokomukoti from Shadelpa. Uh, thank you. Uh, definitely VET would be something that Shadelpa would look at. Uh, because if you want to talk about bread and butter issues, you're talking about bread, butter, tea, uh, sugar flour, rice, the everyday uh, purchases that uh, individuals and families make. So the direct uh, way in which we could help them is uh, um, uh, address the VAT, if not uh, take away the VAT, but reduce it. And uh, obviously that would uh, affect uh, government's income. Uh, so DELPA is looking at uh, reintroducing the capital gains tax levy. Uh, I think it's at the percentage of 28. Uh, that's what I understand at this point in time. But certainly uh, a direct way to help the common people, the grassroots people, uh, would be to look at or revisit that and make a decision on that because that would certainly uh, help immediately. Uh, VET was removed for 21 items uh, from uh, 1st April, uh, so are you planning to extend it further, are you trying to say that? I think the idea is to be consistent with uh, the application of the rules that we put in place. Uh, my understanding that it fluctuates, uh, but the point is, uh, if we want to assist the common people in the long term, then we maintain policies that are long-term as opposed to uh, playing around with figures. Um, I so you're saying long-term VAT removal instead of just up for short-term? Uh, well, obviously, nothing works uh, in a vacuum. Everything is uh, co uh, connected. Uh, and balancing is something that uh, we would need to uh, do. Uh, we're talking about what direct help can we give the people when Sodelpa comes into government? That is certainly an area that we would look into that. Taina, from Unity Fiji. 
uh, it's Lithiana. Thank you, uh, Vijay. Uh, it's, it's all right. It's been a long day. Um, anyway, uh, Unity Fiji is looking at the at um, stopping the uh, govern government's uh, borrowing policy, and um, the other thing that they are looking at is uh, improving public um, uh, sector efficiencies, um, identifying wastages, and uh, in the process, uh, coming up with savings and reallocating expenses without compromising uh, economic growth. Um, we have in place um, an initiative. Uh, it's called the Economic uh, Transformation Program, or the ETP. Um, that's uh, an initiative that's aimed at um, people living in rural areas. Um, for Unity Fiji, uh, they, the economy will be, uh, the backbone of the economy will be based on uh, natural uh, resources. So we're looking at agriculture, uh, forestry, and uh, fishing. What happens in the uh, ETP is that we have five pillars in there. Um, the first one would be um, replacing manual tools with machinery um, to increase uh, cultivation and uh, yield for those in the agricultural sector. Secondly, would be putting up uh, processing centers uh, to allow people, uh, it'll allow the government to uh, provide um, easy and accessible market uh, for our people in the rural areas. And that includes uh, women as well. Um, for women, they won't have the need to come down to the market, um, you know, on Fridays, spend the evening, um, sell their produce the whole uh, of Saturday, and then go back again. What we're trying to do is to stop the separation of mothers from their children uh, so they can stay at home and spend more time with the family. So a, a processing center would uh, provide that um, uh, comfort for them. They don't need to go to the roadsides and sell their produce in, as well. Uh, the third one would be uh, setting up a business bank uh, intended to help uh, those that will be uh, using natural resources uh, for their livelihood. Uh, the fourth one would be uh, providing capital by uh, government, um, you know, to help uh, the farmers uh, with um, uh, this initiative. And the fifth one, which is the most interesting one, would be the cha changing the mindset. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest uh, and uh, most challenging uh, in uh, Fiji right now. Because of our culture, we're so laid back. And we have uh, a tendency of, um, you know, uh, approaching, you know, um, issues with a laid back uh, sort of attitude. So uh, in changing mindsets, we're looking at um, the help of the chiefs. So what I'm saying in here is Unity Fiji will be restoring GCC. Uh, the chiefs working together with um, uh, church leaders of the church and the government uh, to ensure that uh, you know the mindsets of the people are changed. And when I'm saying that, I'm saying that, uh, for example, if I were to talk about you know um, the domestic chores of a, of a wife in a family, um, if uh, you know uh, she comes home at the end of the day. Um, usually the norm is that she takes over uh, work in the kitchen and does all the domestic chores. But when you change mindsets, everybody in the family pitches in to help her. Uh, so we see chiefs coming in um, this regards that um, when they talk about uh, changing mindsets, um, you know, the church leaders help in the same, by singing the same song as well um, as government. So they together um, are able to influence. We'll talk about GCC a bit later on in the right. segment. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, just letting viewers know that we had also invited Fiji First to participate in this women's debate. However, no response was received. The invites were sent from early November. We'll be back after this break. If, if no one hits that 28 or more than 28, who will you be ready to work with? I'm quite ready to form uh, a coalition amongst the opposition party. But we will not form a coalition with Fiji First. Will Sodelpa consider a coalition with NFP? We'll cross that bridge when we, get, when we get to it. Some people are receiving the same salaries today which they were receiving in 2012. Look at what salary the ministers are drawing. Prime Minister gets $1,000 a day, roughly. Mr. Rambuka, what is your stand on Ito K. Len? As I said in Fiji, and on the two in the Sangan Lewan. It is ours, but we have no control over it. They will go for every boat in this country. We will go for every boat in this country. 
we have identified one billion dollars of wasted in the budget one year. Review the laws. After Review the, the laws. After Review the, election. the structure. After Review the purpose. election. Otherwise, we'll make false promises. I don't want you to make false promises. I'm just asking you because there's people wanting to know. As an aspiring prime minister, how do you look at that? Uh, you talking about my Marama? I'm talking about you. Oh, I thought you were saying expiring prime minister. Bulo Vinaka. This is Fiji Village Straight Talk. I'm VJ Narayan. Fiji Village Straight Talk with VJ Narayan. Sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor. Living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there has been it's okay leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, are, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? First I cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when you came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. Hand on your heart. It's him. No, you're uh, a joke. No, you're a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring it up. We don't no, no, I didn't bring it up. You were commander. But yes, every but military officer and serviceman at the time was under your command. You've forgotten you trade them. Bulo Vinaka. This is Fiji Village Trade Talk. I am VJ Narayan. VG Village Straight Talk with VJ Narayan. Sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor. Living in high quality. Watch it live on the VG Village Facebook page. Download the all new VG Village app. Get the latest news direct to your mobile. Get the latest sports updates from our scoreboards online. Navigate easily through our categories. Watch videos from Straight Talk interviews, local music videos, sports and many more. You can now easily listen to your favorite radio stations from your phone. Download the all-new Fiji Village app right now. Welcome back. This is Fiji Village Straight Talk. I'm VJ Narayan, and we're talking uh, to our women candidates uh, tonight uh, on issues uh, that matter to them, national issues, uh, as we get ready for the elections. Uh, Fiji Labour Party, NFP, People's Alliance, Sodelpa, Unity Fiji uh, at the table tonight. Fiji First, not here. Invites were sent, however, no response received. Now, going back to uh, around the table, the question in relation to issues that have been raised about education. Uh, Lenora from NFP, mm. about the curriculum, uh, people are talking about that, Tells and Topper Scholarship. What is your message to the youth listening out there and watching out there? What do you have to offer? Mm. Um, as you know, um, Vijay, both the um, People's Alliance and the National Federation Party have um, have uh, released our vision statements and with the National Federation Party we have said that in the first 100 days of us being in government we will call a an education summit because we need to ask educators we need to ask teachers retired and current teachers we need to even ask students and parents what is wrong with the current system we believe that despite us being in the, in the 21st century, our education system is still stuck in the past. And we really need to talk about having a workforce that is ready for the changes that will happen um, in Fiji. Um, it has, uh, with the way this government works right now, there is no consultation. And with the National Federation Party, it is very important for us to consult with those that laws affect and it goes right across the board you know from standing order 51 being abused in parliament to just asking the people what how do you feel about wednesday the 14th of december as election day if the ministry of education civil servants in the ministry of education directors in the ministry of education had been asked they would have said 
oh, excuse me, we have year 12 and year 13 exams. Could you please think about that? If DISMAC had been asked, they would have said, uh, it's, um, you know, it's cyclone season. Perhaps think about a, a different date. So the first thing we need to do is to hold an education summit and ask the experts on education what their view is on how we change education. People's Alliance, Linda. Well, uh, first of all, uh, VJ, uh, we are going to remove tells and uh, relieve our students of that burden, that debt. Uh, however, we uh, will not just be removing it entirely. Uh, you know, it is such a time where we have already a big debt in our country, almost $10 billion. So we need to be smart about it. And so we are looking at replacing those, um, those uh, loans with uh, scholarships. So it'll be scholarship based where students will serve the time uh, that they studied and they will serve that uh, here in Fiji, whether it's in the public sector but also the private sector. So with that, that actually will help young people who are without jobs right now and struggling to pay tells because they are without jobs. In fact, they're ones that have had to go overseas now to go and earn through NEC in order to pay tells not even to sustain their families or themselves. So once they, um, they serve the time, uh, then they are free to do whatever they want. But, you know, that thing that's important too, because then it, it helps government to uh, find, you know, apprenticeships uh, programs, you know, for these young people in order to be placed, whether it's in government, and then we'll have a stronger working relationship with the private sector to find, uh, you know, apprenticeships for them and hopefully jobs as a result. And I think this will uh, certainly help us to deal with the issue of, of a very high uh, unemployment rate amongst our graduates. They are making use of TELS, but they are not finding jobs at the end of it. And, you know, this is most unfortunate. Um, the other issue with, you know, with education is, uh, you know, the, um, we will continue the free education. Uh, initiative. Uh, however, we do need to look at the quality of education, as Lenora has mentioned. You know, what um, has happened now in our, in our education system, our, our children are just being promoted to the next class, uh, even if they failed. And so we are not uh, holding to account what our teachers are teaching our children. They are not learning that, you know, failure is part of life and that you need to be able to try again in order to succeed. And so they're going through the education system uh, with their n numeracy and literacy not in check. So we even have, you know, Form 3, Form 4 students that, uh, year, year 9 and Year 10 students that cannot read, uh, that are struggling with uh, literacy. And so this is because we are passing our students through when we really should be looking at, you know, uh, for our students who don't really do well to look at remedial um, classes and remedial work for them that um, a school will then be, uh, you know, be focused on taking care of those children so that they try again and try again and then they will, they will do better and that way they get a quality education. We'll have to move to Anna now. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, I'm very uh, proud to uh, just remind uh, the public that uh, Sodelpa was uh, the first party to launch its manifesto and that was uh, in September 2022. So our manifesto has been out there for a, for a while. Uh, and uh, it does uh, have a provision on the education uh, sector. I, 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 this is very important. I know that I've said it uh, before. I'll say it again. Uh, Sodelpa wants to relieve all TELS um, bound uh, debts or uh, students who are, who are bound by um, student loans, uh, Sodelpa wants to relieve them of this burden. And uh, I think one, uh, one thing that is very uh, 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 unique about our, our policy on education is uh, the appreciation of the teachers who, uh, who, uh, who uh, contribute so much to the education system. And Sodelpa wants to show its appreciation by um, addressing the welfare concerning uh, teachers and uh, because we all know teaching is a lifetime calling and they have impacted our, our children so much. Now, under that, we also have um, free tertiary education for first degree based uh, um, 
on uh, students' performance. Uh, we also, uh, in September, we had announced that we are going to review the Education Act to meet the present challenges and opportunity. And also at that time in September, we had also announced the setting up of an education summit to reform our education sector. Uh, of course, as part of that, we uh, think it appropriate to remove short-term contracts or short-term employment contracts for our teachers uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and decentralization of the education uh, structure to create efficiency and friendly administration. I think those are some of the uh, important aspects of our education policy. On the long term, yes, we need to set up an education summit to look at the long term uh, issues and problems. But uh, immediately, we will remove all TELS debt. Lithiana from Unity Fiji. Um, thank you very much, uh, Vijay. Uh, for Unity Fiji, I just wanted to share that uh, we believe education is a right and not a privilege. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share um, with everyone as well is that our education um, uh, policy uh, was also put out in 2018 in our manifesto, and we're continuing with that again in this election. Uh, we are actually going to do three things. One is we continue uh, with the current uh, free education from primary to secondary school. Uh, the second thing that we are going to do is extend free education up to tertiary level. And the third one would be to forgive all um, uh, TELS and uh, we're going to uh, do away with the um, TOPAS uh, scholarship as well. Uh, the new initiative would see that um, as long as you have an uh, acceptance uh, letter from any of the universities, you qualify for a scholarship. And the idea behind it really is to encourage young people um, and anybody out there who's, uh, you know, uh, challenged uh, financially or has always wanted to an opportunity to pursue an education uh, to actually do that. And we look at education um, as a way to break intergenerational poverty. Uh, so that's Unity Fiji's um, stand on education. Taina from uh, Fiji Labour Party. Yes, um, thank you, Vijay. Um, one thing uh, the Fiji First uh, Packet government has successfully managed to do is shifting the burden from the government to the students. Um, so we believe that there must be a full review of the entire education system um, by improving the curriculum as in our manifesto, um, which needs to be modern progressive uh, involving music, sports, arts, um, and um, we will also reduce TELS by 50% for those who complete the courses. And uh, as we go, we will slowly phase out TELS because we believe um, the student should have some sense of responsibility. That when you go to study, you are paying at least something, you will feel more responsible to, to the, more responsible um, when you finally graduate, that you actually put in some of your dollars and uh, that carries weight. Um, we also believe that uh, we should have a state funding done for lunches to help uh, students who come from uh, uh, not so fortunate families. On to the next question, and this is for People's Alliance, uh, Linda Tambuya. What is your assessment on the health sector in our country, and what do you think needs to happen? I think we are all in agreement here that the, the whole health sector needs a reform. Uh, you know, starting off with equipment that work in the hospitals, as well as the need to upgrade our current health centers that are in really big, big, highly populated areas like Valley Level Health Center. Macquarie Health Center. I mean, these are still health centers, but they are actually catering for more people than in Suva. Now, the, the policy that the government came up with that people have to now go to their own health centers uh, you know, in order to get service um, has not been met with the infrastructure needed to cope with the amount of people that are in our uh, urban centers especially. Um, uh, you know, as far as the rural areas are concerned, I mean, I was just in Kandavu and went to the, the health center there at, um, at Naleva in uh, near Kavala, 
and uh, they were out of stock with, uh, you know, uh, very basic medicines. And so, uh, you know, these are some of the things that even the health centers in the rural areas are complaining about. Uh, another issue is the Nasimi Koro, which is the village nurses. Uh, in, in Ono alone, in the Tikina Ono, they haven't been paid since May. Some haven't been paid since January. So, you know, it's all lacking, it's all falling behind. We have a very, very articulate and, uh, you know, well-spoken minister for health who explains many things away. But unfortunately, his service is not matching that. So that definitely needs to be improved uh, in the new government, and we are committed to doing that. Anna Rokomokoti from Sodelpa. Um, we have, uh, first of all, set aside uh, 385 million dollars uh, to uh, cater for the Ministry of Health and Medical Services. Uh, our medical uh, system was tested during COVID, and uh, it's obviously it's obvious that uh, it needs a revamp. It needs a reform. It needs. Uh, there needs to be a change of attitude, and I think that that can only happen when you have change of leadership. Um, and uh, having said that, I wanted to share my bit of experience. It's similar to what uh, Mr. Moya has shared uh, to one in one of the local uh, uh, medical hospitals or sub medical hospitals. I think they call them. Uh, I did inquire about. The availability of medicine because they were proudly telling me about their doctor um, but they did not have a dispensary as I and I've noticed that that seems to be the trend or the practice you have a, a medical uh, facility whether it be a small clinic or whatever it is but there's no dispensary to, to dispense with medicine so then it, that in itself calls into question the type of health system we have in place. I remember Doctor, uh, one of the uh, uh, senior um, uh, people at the Ministry of Health had a couple of weeks ago told us not to discuss the, um, the health system. I remember I, I have it captured on my um, uh, phone and I was uh, appalled to hear that a very senior person from the ministry had instructed, it, it almost, it sounded like an instruction that it was, it was not for us to discuss the health sector. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to discuss it oh, because it concerns us, it concerns our families, our children and our local communities. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we need to look at is ensuring that our health structure, the public health structure is mm -hmm is modern enough, is good enough to respond to the rising uh, needs and the changing times. So that's, that's something that uh, Sodelpa would look at. Letiana Mbulivo of Unity Fiji. Um, thank you Vijay. Um, it's a shame really uh, to look at the uh, condition uh, of our um, um, hospitals um, at the moment. Unity Fiji is looking at um, uh, putting in an additional $200 million to help out with the infrastructure, um, uh, purchasing of uh, equipments. As we know, even a visit to the hospital nowadays, most of the equipments have been faulty for a very long time. They've never been replaced. Um, I've heard it being said um, how they seem to be running a Panadol pharmacy in there because most of the time when people come in, they don't have the proper medicines that they're supposed to be prescribed. So uh, these are some of the things we're looking at improving to make sure that when people are sick and they do come to a hospital, the hospital is in a condition good enough uh, to look after them uh, so they can be treated, uh, having, uh, you know, even having um, hospital beds available. I think that's one of the common issues that normally come up. Uh, looking at the salaries, uh, particularly of the nurses, uh, these are some of the areas that we, we need to look at. And I think in Fiji, uh, sorry, I believe in Fiji, one of the biggest challenges for us is our um, health care services. So that's definitely an area that really needs to be improved greatly. Taina from Fiji Labour Party. Uh, yes, the Fiji Labour Party uh, believes that uh, our health system in Fiji has really deteriorated over time. So we are looking at uh, setting up a national health insurance scheme, um, something like Australia's uh, Medicare, where not only the rich can uh, go abroad for treatment, we can have everybody. So um, in that term, we are talking about workers, 
or workers and even uh, uh, unemployed uh, um, individuals. Um, this, uh, for, uh, we want to make it accessible for all Fijians. Um, that too, with um, we want to reduce the movement of uh, nurses and doctors abroad by um, remunerating their package. Increase the pay so that they don't go out and uh, look for greener pastures. And um, we stock the free medicines and consumable uh, to all hospitals. Um, we, we, we are also thinking of introducing um, mobile uh, health care. Uh, the people can come to the hospital, let the hospital go to them. Check uh, them in the villages, rural areas. Um, those who are sick can be directed to the hospital, uh, say in a monthly or bi-monthly basis. Lenora from NFP. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, VJ. I mean, in Parliament, we've... Honourable Tikundundua, former Honourable Tikundundua, has gone on and on and on about the state of the SOPD clinic at the CWM. But first of all, as the daughter of a nurse, I must acknowledge all our healthcare workers around Fiji, doctors, nurses, orderlies, wherever you work in our Ministry of Health, thank you so much for all that you've put in, especially during the COVID time. Um, but we know that our healthcare is, is near collapse. Um, our hospitals, many hospitals cannot look after um, the sick, the dying. You know, simple things like bringing your own sheets, bringing your own um, bedding and so forth. But one thing that I always, that always hits me, and I'm going to try and explain this as quickly as possible, is primary health care. My mother was a community health nurse, and it was preventative care more than, you know, so what we want to do, what we should be doing as a country is prevent as many people from going to hospital, from needing to be hospitalized. So let's backtrack and talk about how do we keep Fijians healthy? How do we prevent? I mean, we've got some of the worst uh, diabetes uh, cases in the world. So we need to prevent that first and foremost. We all know how bad our health system is. We all know how overworked our, our healthcare workers are. But how do we prevent us having to go into hospital? So let's talk about, again, using the food that we grow in Fiji, reducing our import bills so we can consume what we grow here, the most healthy superfoods, you know, make it um, affordable for, for, for people in Fiji. You're watching Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm Vijay Narayan. We'll be back after this break. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, who, you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any, I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? Fiji First Buy. cannot intervene into a personal Absolutely matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came out with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart. It's him. No, you're a joke. Uh, no, yes. you are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring it up. We don't no, no, I gotta bring it up. You were commander. But yes, every but military officer and serviceman at the time was under your command. forgotten you trained them. Bulovinaka, this is Fiji Village Street Talk. I am VJ Narai. Fiji Village Trade Talk with VJ Narayan, sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor, living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. Download the all new Fiji Village app. Get the latest news direct to your mobile. Get the latest sports updates from our scoreboards online. Navigate easily through our categories. Watch videos from Straight Talk interviews, local music videos, sports and many more. You can now easily listen to your favorite radio stations from your phone. Download the all-new Fiji Village app right now. If, if no one hits that 
more 28 or more than 28, who will you be ready to work with? I'm quite ready to form uh, a coalition amongst the opposition party. But we will not form a coalition with Fiji First. Will Sodelpa consider a coalition with NFP? We'll cross that bridge when we get, when we get to it. Some people are receiving the same salaries today which they were receiving in 2012. Look at what salary the ministers are drawing. Prime Minister gets $1,000 a day, roughly. Mr. Rambuka, what is your stand on Ito K. Len? As I said in Fijian, they are not the two in the Sangan Lewan. It is ours, but we have no control over it. They will go for every boat in this country. We will go for every boat in this country. We have identified $1 billion of wasted in the budget one year. Review the laws, after review the, the, the laws, after review the, the structure, after the, the election. Otherwise, we'll make false promises. I don't want you to make false promises. I'm just asking you because there's people wanting to know. As an aspiring prime minister, how do you look at that? Uh, you talking about my Marama? I'm talking about you. Oh, I thought you were saying expiring prime minister. Bulo Vinaka, this is Fiji Village Straight Talk. I am VJ Narayan. VG Village Straight Talk with VJ Narayan. Sponsored by Salt and Pepper Home Decor. Living in high quality. Watch it live on the Fiji Village Facebook page. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there has been Itoke leadership, everybody has been embraced. He cannot stomach the fact that he is not in government. You said that you couldn't pay out bonuses, but this shows an increase in board directors' fees. For any you, co- you are wanting to lead the country, not me. For any I, I'm asking you the question again, back to corporal punishment. Right. What's your stand on it? Fiji First By cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely you can for small you businesses. Can't. I was very uh, surprised when he came up with that statement that I would conduct a coup if I lose. Not Hand me. on your heart. It's him. No, you're a uh, joke. Uh, no, it's, you are a joke. You're a joke. You're a joke. Don't bring it up. We don't. No, no, I don't agree. Fiji First cannot intervene into a personal matter. Absolutely you can for You're watching Fiji Village Street Talk. I'm VJ Narayan. Tonight, we've got uh, Taina Roko Tambua from the Fiji Labour Party. Lenora Ngerengere Tambua from NFP. Linda Tambuya from the People's Alliance. Ana Roko Mokoti from Sodelpa. And Litiana Bulivo from Unity Fiji. Fiji First was sent an in- invite uh, since November. And uh, no response came from the General Secretary. I have said Kayum on female participation. On to our last segment, and uh, we'll start off with Anna Rokomokoti from Sodelpa. Anna, what is your stand on racial unity, the Great Council of Chiefs, and Itoke rights? As some say, by bringing back the former GCC formation, will bring back racial discrimination and will upset how things are at the moment. What's your view on that? I totally disagree with that view. Uh, the mere fact that you have provincial councils existing till today and uh, coexisting with other different systems, public systems in place, is a testament that uh, there is no, it's not a racial thing. I do not believe that it is a racial thing. Um, just to uh, share a bit of uh, my experience, I've uh, I've worked well with all races, I love all races, and I think we should promote uh, racial uh, harmony. Uh, Having said that, uh, we need to accept that there are some people, a significant uh, number of our population still live in villages and live under the provincial administration. Um, So having said that, um, Sodelpa, um, uh, has a policy that has been set apart for the Ministry of uh, Itauke uh, Affairs and uh, the policy basically includes the consultation in regards to the Ingolinguli issues um, and uh, aligning the VKB as a basis of naturalization for Itauke. Um, uh, we want to review provincial councils and the Manua setup. Uh, review lease conditions on native land development. Uh, uh, we have uh, budget allocations for Iturangani Koro 
uh, and uh, settlement uh, headmen. We also uh, believe the need to review the Fijian administration system. Uh, provincial economic development uh, is something that uh, is part of the Sodelpa policy. Um, so those are just some of the things that uh, Sodelpa wants to focus on when Sodelpa comes into government. I do not believe that the setting up of a GCC automatically means uh, racial disharmony. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to uh, understand that uh, the type of council that is going to be brought into place is definitely not going to be... Uh, 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 I think, I think the, the idea that it's, it's politicized because of the role that the GCC played in the 1997 constitution, which was a very political role, and uh, Sodelpa is advocating for a different type of council uh, which will sit at the pinnacle of the provincial administration system. You already have Mosini uh, Koro, uh, you already have Mosini Tikina, uh, you already have Mosini Asana, and it's only natural to have uh, sitting at the pinnacle of that pyramid the GCC. Uh, I th uh, obviously, we will need to go back to the people uh, and ask uh, because it is a significant uh, shift uh, in the sense that it's been uh, taken away. But uh, the idea that we that Sodelpa has is to use this forum to safeguard the interest of the Vanua. The Vanua meaning. The Naturang Mbale, the Mara Mbale, the Nana Ngele, the Nana Kanakana, the Nana Ngolingoli, the Nana Itutuba Vanua. You know those things that are unique only to the Itauke, and I. It's something that uh, Itauke is born into. I know that it's been regarded as a uh, colonial hangover or colonial thing. Be that as it may, it's something that we've inherited, and I don't think just uh, uh, abolishing it uh, makes the, if it is considered a problem, go away. I think it needs to be taken head on, and let's go back to the people. Let's ask them, how do you want this if you so really you want ask it? them first before bringing it back, or you will bring it back? This is what we are proposing, and obviously we will go back to them. Uh, because in the Itauke Affairs Act, there is a provision for the minister to set up such a, uh, has the authority to set up uh, such councils. Uh, so the idea is for the Itauke Affairs Board, operating under the law, to make consultations before it is endorsed, if the people want it endorsed. <coughs> Lityana from Unity Fiji. Thank you, Vijay. Um, Unity Fiji is of the stand that um, the Great Council of Chiefs, they need to be uh, reinstated back. Uh, we're looking at enhancing their roles um, by giving them opportunities to have further studies uh, to help them uh, carry out their roles better as leaders of the Vanua. We feel that the Chiefs are a very much uh, an integral part of the Vanua itself. as part of our culture. Um, it's always been there from the very beginning. Um, the other thing is we're going to realign their roles so they can help us with um, um, to achieve economic development and help out with our uh, social uh, problems as well. So uh, Unity Fiji look, uh, looks at the, uh, the chiefs as um, having a very important uh, role to play in society. They can actually help, like I had mentioned earlier, uh, working together with the church leaders and the government um, to achieve um, uh, both, uh, you know, come up with uh, resolutions, having them impl implemented uh, to resolve some of our social issues and uh, economic development as well. Tainara Kotambua from uh, Labour Party. Yes, um, the Fiji Labour Party believes that um, the decision to have uh, the GCC back on board solely lies with the Ito case and the 14th province of Fiji. So it is upon the Ito case to decide, it's upon the um, 14 provinces to decide if they want the DCC back on. Um, the government will only support them. So whatever the Ito case decide on land issues, the GCC 
the government will support. Lenora from NFP. Thank you, thank you, VJ. You know, the NFP's um, vision um, is for a friendly and reformed and efficient system of Ethiopia administration. But first and foremost, I think all the ladies have, have spoken about it, is consultation. You know, nothing about us without us, I think, is the way to explain it. So we need to talk with all the indigenous communities. And I'm not just talking about the DCC. That will be a decision that the new government should support after widely consulting um, um, all Fijians. But it also extends to the other groups of ethnicities in Fiji, where we must be supporting the use of our local languages, the use of our local dialects, supporting a cultural um, learning, um, you know, our, our stories, you know, we, we come from a long line of storytellers, but this has all but disappeared. And this is something that we must encourage. And it's not, you know, let's just, it's not for, about the GCC, it's about us as individuals, whether you're Rotuman, whether you're Ikiribas, whether you're uh, Nivanuatu, whether you're from the Solomon Islands, you know, uh, this is something that the new government must support. And that is the encouragement of our own uh, languages and our own dances, our own mechas, that, that is very, very important. But when we're talking about the GCC, the role of the GCC really is something that we must widely consult our population about and is something that the new government must um, work to support. Linda Tambuya from People's Alliance. Uh, the People's Alliance uh, government within the first 100 days will re reinstate the Great Council of Chiefs. And uh, we believe that their role and how they are now relevant in the 21st century uh, should be left to the chiefs to discuss and decide. Uh, you know, the, what has been mentioned about a wide consultation of uh, Walita, okay, we don't think that's necessary. I think it's important to let the chiefs decide once they convene uh, what kind of uh, GCC they will be to be relevant now. Uh, one thing I just want to, you know, remind us all is that, you know, when you're talking about racial harmony, one of the greatest gifts that Ito K has given to our people, and that is to provide land, native land, in our urban centers that have housed not just the 14 provinces, but also all races who have needed land when they couldn't afford it. And this has been from the dawn of time so, you know, it is the kindness of the chiefs. Uh, I'm a product myself. I was raised in Wakanisala and Kalambu, and the 14 provinces sits there, as well as all races who were given the opportunity to start off uh, their homes and their families uh, until they're able to afford it and, and, and go out. And this is the same along Kalsa Road, along, you know, it's, it's, it's not even to the villages. The great council of chiefs can be and is relevant for everyone that lives in Fiji. And if there is anything that they will promote, that is how we continue to look at land use and look at, um, look at how we can uh, have that available for everyone that lives in this country. And our people, our chiefs are the very first that would give away land if they need to, to help someone in need. And we even saw this with, uh, you know, even with the very ricey settlement when they were um, evicted and their houses were torn down just in the last few months. Uh, the uh, Itoke um, landowners were the first. The Liluni Matangalis from, uh, you know, from a couple of areas just in Nasinu and Nosori were the first to give me a call and offer um, undeveloped land, which uh, you know, we then approached the government to, to develop it so that these 40, 21 to 40 families could be relocated. And uh, you know, regardless of what their ethnicity is, in, in order to help them to, to have a home. But this has fallen on deaf ears on the government. And so we as the new government will ensure that our people, even if they're displaced or if they need a place to go, regardless of race, that um, Itoke land will be made available for this. And so it's really, you know, uh, when you're talking about racial harmony, the need for housing the need for you know cheaper prices of goods, the bread and butter issues cuts across all um, races and, and ethnicities. And I think the Great Council of Chiefs, as an advisory body to the government, 
an advisory role to the government of all things pertaining to Ithoke. It's not just preservation of culture and traditional knowledge, but also the use of our native land and how we can ensure that that is uh, equitably available to all ethnicities and races in Fiji. Could I just add uh, that one of our paramount chiefs, Naamara Manarokutendukethi, initiated something very positive uh, um, towards the descendants of the indigenous, indigenous uh, sorry, the indentured laborers, uh, and uh, gave them a name, Naluvenda uh, Naratu, showing um, basically their heartfelt and utmost uh, gratitude for, for the contribution that they've made. Uh, and that is a paramount chief's attitude. So I, 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 I believe if that is something that we can uh, uh, use as a beacon, then certainly with a, a great council of chiefs in place, we're headed for, for brighter and good days, brighter Thank days. Thank you, Anna. Next question uh, for Litya Nambulivo of Unity Fiji. I'll give some statistics and I'll want uh, your answer on that. There are four statistics that show the real issues for women and girls in Fiji. We have double the global rates of violence against women and girls. 72% of Fijian women experience one or more types of violence in their lifetime. Fiji has 50% unmet contraceptive needs, which means women cannot negotiate over their sexual relationships with men and are suffering due to that. Fijian women from rapid care analysis studies do three to five times the unpaid care, domestic and communal work as men. And ILO says women do 76% of unpaid care work in the world. But this is not reflected in our leadership in policies, according to people who have sent these issues. We have some of the lowest rates of women in national leadership in the world. What will be your gender equality and gender justice focused policies? Please be specific, Unity Fiji. Um, thank you very much, uh, Vijay. Uh, Unity Fiji is looking at, uh, I think we, we go back to, um, if I may take it a little bit back, uh, to women rep uh, representations in parliament. I think the fact that we don't have too many uh, representations of women in parliament, we do have, um, but they haven't really met the 30% um, that we had pledged in the Beijing Platform for Action, uh, where uh, if we see the figures so far, they have moved from 4.3% uh, in 1995 and we're sitting at 21.6% uh, in 2020. Um, the reason I raised that is I feel that uh, because maybe because we don't have uh, an opportunity to have our voices heard and very minimal uh, representation in parliament, uh, it could be one of, one of the reasons why. Um, I'll know, come back to my question. What exactly. will be your gender equality and gender justice focused policies specifically? Okay, uh, we are looking at uh, mainstreaming um, gender into all sectors of the uh, uh, government um, as one of our, um, our strategies, strategies and uh, ensuring that um, uh, whatever policies um, are being created, um, that they will, have, they will include um, uh, women um, uh, equally so they can have access to... Uh, um, to uh, equal opportunities. Um, the reason I, I am saying that is because uh, if we're looking at the stats that you've given us, it really shows that we are not really um, properly addressing um, issues uh, or maybe uh, the effectiveness of working with NGO groups uh, that can help us, um, you know, um, sort out, uh, uh, sort of identify uh, reasons why we're having uh, such a high number of uh, violence against women. Um, and other social problems that are affecting our... Taira Rokutambua from Fiji Labour Party. Um, we believe that um, women should play a full and active role in a political, economic, cultural and social life uh, in Fiji. 
Um, uh, Labour is looking at uh, setting up a gender equality com commission, GEC. Uh, GEC will run independent to the government and will work closely with the NGOs. Um, so as to bridge the gap between the government and the NGOs. Um, we will set up, um, we will review existing uh, legislation to remove discrimination as well, uh, against women and non-binary genders, um, non-binary genders, um, and ensure that new laws firmly represent all genders, including men. Um, we will also ensure that uh, women in formal uh, sectors are paid statutory wages. And uh, with that, uh, we believe that uh, family co courts should be well resourced to effectively deal with reported cases to ensure compliance. We should also introduce some kind of mediation services. Um, usually, um, we have a very, uh, what can I say, uh, dictatorial, I think. Oh, uh, right now, where when there's adversary in the family, um, men are quickly taken, locked up, keys thrown away, and it is the children that's been penalized. We believe that we should introduce a mediation uh, center where this adversary needs to be addressed. So we can always give a second chance to a family and don't break them up unnecessarily just because of what you misunderstand. Mm -hmm. On to NFP, Lenora. Um, thanks, Fiji. So the NFP's vision um, for domestic safety and empowerment of uh, women and girls is through, again, as I said before, partnerships with NGOs and groups that have been working in areas that pertain to domestic violence. Um, not working against them as this government tends to do. Um, we also want to do this through um, targeted leg uh, legislation, community engagement and, and the support to reduce domestic violence and abuse of women and children. We need a strong government support for um, NGO advocacy. Education, I think, is very, very important. We need to be talking about domestic violence in our schools as well. We need to be careful about what our young men and young women are watching. But when it comes back to what we're going to be talking about as, as the government with the National Federation Party, we need to improve support and resource for victims of, of, uh, of domestic violence. And we also need to be uh, developing local training and entrepreneurship, building around supporting women in independent income generation so that they themselves are independent and not therefore dependent on perhaps abusive partners. Lina Tambuya of People's Alliance. I think just adding on to what uh, Lenora has, uh, has shared, we're pretty much quite similar in terms of the uh, empowerment of women. You know, one thing that, uh, you know, that we need to revisit, which used to exist before, in, um, you know, before um, this government was a, a really huge program on family planning. You know, and, and, and having that available for, um, you know, for our women and also to, to bring back that, that program where women have a choice. Um, you know, it's not just the, the, the full-on, you know, attitude that, you know, uh, we're going to have a lot of children and uh, you don't have a choice as a woman, but they, they really should be able to be given a choice in education on, uh, you know, on family planning and, uh, you know, and how the, a woman has a choice is very important in what Lenora stated. Also, you know, uh, looking at uh, women who are um, take, doing a lot of unpaid care, you know, at home and wherever they are, uh, really the need to empower women in SMEs, in, you know, home-based businesses. We saw a boom of that during COVID with women who are at home that just came out with these amazing talents and you know we need to build on that we need to build on that and there has been a a disconnect so far for those that have really come out during COVID there hasn't been much of a program to take them to the next level and I think we need as a government you know we are committed to to looking at that to empowering these women to take their you know their businesses to the next level so that they're not just dealing with unpaid care they also have um, and uh, businesses that they can run from home to sustain uh, the income, a second income in order to uh, afford their families, as, as well as, um, you know, looking at equal 
employment opportunities, you know, where the workplace is, is a place of equal employment. And so we need to be able to inculcate that in our workplaces for our employers that if they're, if they're employing a man, then they employ a woman. You know, it's called equal employment opportunity. If they have similar, um, you know, um, uh, credentials, then we should consider uh, the gender makeup. Of, uh, of your employees in your workplace. I'm very proud, uh, you know, to be in the party, the People's Alliance, where our leader has, uh, you know, has uh, obviously, you know, put forward the need for, to have a, you know, a lead, a woman leader in the party. And so, as the deputy party leader of the People's Alliance, I'm very grateful for that. And so I think we, it takes male advocates, because men dominate leadership, male advocates to stand up for women and to prop up women as leaders. And, and that's what is needed to, and, and, and it, 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 it needs to be uh, something that we continue to educate our men on and our boys on about how to respect women and how also to, you know, to raise our, our um, boys so that they're not turning to pornography, they're not turning to, you know, to substance abuse, but they are finding other, you know, means, meaningful ways to occupy that time because you know there's anecdotal evidence that pornography is contributing to violence you know to sexual violence against women and children so we as a government need to care about that and how we can control that and how we can control what our children are watching but really it will take a nationwide effort we'll to reduce uh, to reduce you know um, violence Moving against women and children Anna Rokomokoti of Sodelpa right the Sodelpa government uh, will set aside 138 million for the initiative that it has uh, created under the this portfolio of women uh, children and poverty of, uh, alleviation so some of the initiatives uh, that sodelpa will come up with is the uh, poverty alleviation project increase grants to ngos uh, review the monitoring policies establish disability tribunal establish fusion centers for SMEs by vulnerable groups women economic empowerment promotion of women leadership in the public uh, sector and parliament advocating zero tolerance on violence against women on men domestic violence uh, helpline to be set up and uh, ha having stated all these initiatives I think it's also important for me to respond uh, something that was uh, brought up by uh, um, um, our, from our Labour Party uh, candidate. Uh, Sodelpa uh, recognizes that there's only two sex, female and male. Uh, having said that, this is, uh, you would appreciate that Sodelpa uh, uh, is founded on uh, many universally accepted principles and fundamentals, but two main one being the Christian uh, dynamics, the teachings of the Lord Jesus and uh, the Vanua concept, uh, the Vanua and everything that it represents. So uh, I think it's important to, 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 to also say that uh, Sodelpa believes in equal pay for equal work. Uh, so I, I I believe I'd like to finish on that note. Thank you, Anna. And uh, we're just five days away from uh, elections, of course, uh, and then campaign blackout starts from Monday. Uh, you have your last say to the people watching uh, and listening. Uh, what do you have to tell them on how do you see Fiji in the next four years? And what is your vision for Fiji? So we'll start off with Taina from uh, Fiji Labour Party and go around the room. Um, thank you, uh, Vijay. Um, my message to the Fijians listening in today, um, we have only five days left um, to election. It is very important that you make your vote count. Um, if you want a change in government, if you want a change for the better, you have to be part of the change. Um, if Labour, um, if we are given a chance to run for the next four years, we're looking at uh, bringing down the national debt. Um, we are looking at um, um, enhancing the lives of the people with uh, better wages, better living conditions. Um, 
instead of sending people overseas to work, we should have employment here, have money here. When you go overseas, you go and spend your money. So it is very important that uh, each and every citizen of Fiji should go and vote on that day. Make a vote count so you can be part of the change for the better. Lenora from NFP. Oh, thank you, um, Vijay. With the elections ahead on Wednesday the 14th, you need to choose wisely. You really need to choose wisely. Everything us five ladies have spoken about today in what our vision is, in our manifesto, can only become reality if the party that we represent becomes government. So, I, this is the, the elephant in the room, and that is the 5% threshold. And this is an opportunity for me to just say that you need to educate yourself about the 5% threshold. Everything we've said here is fantastic, but that will not happen unless the parties that we represent become government. So it's crunch time for Fiji. This is going to be the most historic election in Fiji's history. Choose wisely. Know what the laws say about who gets into government, depending on how many votes the party gets. Please educate yourself. Do go and vote. Thank you. Lina Tambuya, People's Alliance. Our country and our people have lived in fear for too long. It's been 16 years, and we just need to end the fear. We need to be able to bring our freedoms back, our freedom of speech, our freedom to, of movement, our freedom of assembly, constitutional rights that we haven't had for so long that have been over-regulated, over-regulated by this government. We need to choose wisely in these elections. And the first thing we will feel when the government changes is freedom. And that's what we need. So please choose the People's Alliance, turn up to vote on the day, and vote for zero five. Ana Rokomokoti. Uh, I, I propose to you that Sadopa is your party. <laughs> uh, I also propose to you that uh, Sadopa is uh, a party uh, which is really government in waiting. Uh, we have a very able leader. We have very able men and women. We have a very uh, able uh, manifesto. Um, I would plead with you not to uh, sit idly by on the 14th of December. Do not let this opportunity go by. Uh, if you think that it does not concern you, think again. Because every food that you put on your table will be uh, determined, or the price of food put on your table will be determined by the government. And uh, the price of fuel, the price of transport, the price of everything. So uh, I would encourage you to go out in numbers and vote. Uh, vote Sodelpa. Uh, vote 373. Thank you. Tatiana um, Mbulivu. Thank you very much. I will pitch for Unity Fiji, and the reason is because we have credibility in leadership, leadership that we can trust. Uh, take the time to read our manifesto. It is a blueprint of what we are going to do when we get into government. Uh, we have leaders that have a proven track record um, of, um, uh, I would speak for our party leader, Mr. Savanada Narumbe, somebody who has put six national budgets together, and one of them is, uh, is a balanced one. Um, we are talking about things that we have, we know that we have done in the past and that, that can happen again. Um, also, I would like to appeal to young people out there, please, uh, do your research if you have to. Talk to your parents about it. Find out about the leaders. What have the leaders got to bring to the table? Uh, read up on the manifesto, then you make your decision. Do not be swayed. Uh, don't follow. Uh, don't vote for the sake of uh, you know, following, uh, following your friends or because somebody else is voting for someone. But do a little bit of homework and find out. And please, vote for Savannah Narumbe, uh, 342, and my candidate number is 175, Vinaka. So that's the show for tonight and uh, we'd just like to state that uh, we invite parties to this table uh, to talk straight about policies that matter. It's about accountability and to allow people to come in and for them to be allowing themselves to be held accountable 
in a room based on the questions that we've gathered from you. As you know that the radio stations that we have, FM 96, Legend FM, VTFM, Radio Naftarang and Radio Sargam, we have been going out and about every day to find out what you'd like to ask the different people during this debate. So those are the questions. The formation of questions come from that and we are getting ready for that as well as uh, our last debate will take place at 7 p.m. Sunday, 11 December and uh, that's the leaders debate where we have got confirmation from People's Alliance leader Sitiveni Rambuka, uh, National Federation Party leader Professor Biman Prasad, Unity Fiji leader Savinada Narumbe, Sarapa leader William Ngavoka and Fiji Labour Party leader Mahendra Chaudhary. They are all locked in all confirmed to be here at 7 p.m. Sunday. We are awaiting the confirmation of Fiji First Leader Warenge Bainimarama for the leaders' debate. As we've said, that we have sent the invites from early November and we are awaiting their response. Stay with us. We'll get you more and see you on Sunday night. What I did in 2006 is to clean up the mess in the study. When there has been Itoke leadership, 